everybody. We're back here in Immersive Intelligence. Okay. That's kind of silly. We, it's probably going to make your mind bleed a little bit. We are doing the coagulator. Coagulator? Coagulator. Coagulator. We'll go with that. So this is the device right here. It is a five stack item and it is extremely complex and unfortunately has no GUI. So everything operates by magic. Let's get you uh, going with a little bit of magic. Perfect. Let's get this. Okay, so this is the overall view. It is a very beautiful piece of equipment. Its animation is just amazing. I'll show you that in a little bit. Well, let's go ahead and show you how to build it. All right. Go over here, as you can see. Ooh, my goodness. While we're doing that, let's go ahead and break off a chunk here because we need that last stage. All right. So, here we go. Um, excuse me. This is my book. Book. All right. Let's get this page open. It is under. Oh boy. Maybe over here. Okay. Maybe this might take me. Eventually, there we go. It's under motor works. <laughs> Probably because it's rubber. That we're dealing with trying to process rubber. Okay. So, here it is. It's a five stack item. It will work. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. Yep. It's a little bit of eye bleeding there. Um, trying to figure out what we got here. So we'll go ahead and show you on large scale. Here are your materials. 33 iron sheet metal. Six concrete tile slabs. Remember that. Tile slabs. 32 light engineering blocks. One high voltage coil block six heavy mechanical engineering blocks, one redstone engineering block, four steel fences, three sheet uh, steel sheet slabs, three me <laughs> sheet metal slabs, and 29 sheet scaffolding. All right, so there you go. This is what it looks like. A lot of stuff, ish, uh, but not too expensive. So here we go. We're going to make a line of scaffolding. The second one's, of course, going to be this engineering block. It's redstone engineering block. So we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's a pretty massive piece of equipment. A pretty massive layout, and it stacks five high. All right? So here you go, here's your, your concrete tile slabs. This is the last you're going to use them. You're going to use them all up. And you're going to do steel calf, scaffolding, control block, and then fill in the rest. Sheet metal scaffolding. Let's move on to the second layer. All right, it looks a little bit more complex. But as you can see, right over here, we're going to go ahead and put in our half slab. Uh, steel sheet metal then we're gonna follow that down until we get to the end with light engineering blocks and right the side of the light engineering block we're gonna go down put on all our heavy mechanical engineering blocks 
make sure I didn't forget a piece. It looks like I did. Here we go. A piece of scaffolding right there over the redstone controller. The heavy engineering ones. The engineering ones. And then we're going to fill in a 2x3 uh, area with light engineering blocks. And then on the side of that, a 3x3 three three iron sheet metal area. And then right here, we're going to put in a steel sheet metal slab. Nothing over here. And then in this little corner, a 2x2 two two light engineering block. All right, so moving up to the third layer. That's where we start getting a little bit more interesting. We're going to start back over here at this 2x2 two two light engineering block. We're going to put another layer on it. Then we're going to wrap around a fence post with this iron sheet metal. 3x3 three three area with a steel fence in the middle. And then over here, we're going to drop in a light, a steel sheet metal slab that it steers right in front of me and then we're going to put light engineering blocks two on the side of that three in the front so we get this shape then on the side of the steel sheet metal slab we're going to put this high voltage coil block and that's it oh sorry we're going to run all the way down over here at the end and we're going to drop in a heavy uh, I'm sorry, a steel fence post. All right. Yeah. Now we're going to go see. I did not quite complete everything in my setup. It's been a little bit of figuring out how it works, but. Oh, wait. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Nope, that is absolutely right. Okay. So let's stay over here by this steel fence that we just dropped. We're going to put one more on top of it. Then we're going to ride over here and we're going to put iron sheet metal above the 2x2 two two area of light engineering blocks. We're going to go over here to the steel fence post and we're going to add one more steel fence post on top. So there we go. Then over here we're going to put in a 2x2 two two layer of iron sheet metal. And on the side of that, we're going to put a light engineering block. And that, because that's stupid, I think it's trying to get on something. All right. Or there was Enderman. Probably Enderman. We'll blame the Enderman. <laughs> so anyways, here we go. That's it for the next layer. And it just slowly falls off my desk. Yep. Seen it? Let's move on to the final layer. All right, so the final layer. Let's go over here. We'll add one more uh, layer of two by two iron sheet metal. And then on top of the steel uh, fence, we're gonna put light engineering blocks and we're gonna come around like an L onto that top of this block over here. So we get a little L. And then we're gonna put another layer of iron sheet metal and then, of course, we're going to come over here, and we're going to put two blocks of light engineering blocks facing this direction. So it, it goes right above these two blocks right here. And that will complete it. Now, to activate the structure, we just simply come over here to, I assume, this is, I guess, the front side doesn't quite make sense but this is a good area to hit anyways regardless but the cool area is over here and so here we go the final product and if you notice I had my pipe uh, showing how the the pipes go in so you got two inputs uh, unfortunately they don't have the blue dot but they have the uh, black icon much like the uh, believe the chemical bath was like. I think that was just a uh, black square too as well. So it would be nice if they would to include in the graphics the blue dot to show the input so it's consistent through the immersive engineering and immersive items. Alright, so 
as you can see, it is a very beautiful piece of equipment. It has two inputs, both on uh, opposite side. I do not believe it matters on which side your latex is going to go in the next, uh, on the other side to carbon and outside. So, um, and then of course, the beautiful animation that I'll show you here, um, which let's go ahead and knock out really quick. Let me go ahead. Throw some latex in this bucket here. Gonna go in there. I used a glass pipe from a uh, Galaxy Craft to uh, show the uh, to show how the the fluid is is flowing through the equipment. So let's go over here and see how this thing is progressing. Obviously, we ran out of carbon monoxide. Oh, we're making carbon. We're, yeah, we're making carbon monoxide. Anyways, how do we get carbon dioxide? Uh, and that was a little challenging. And how we get it is we simply put, as simply, <laughs> we put this carbon dioxide filter top of an advanced uh, uh, blast furnace that goes right on top uh, and I use uh, filters just to make sure everything is going in the right direction uh, where is my did I actually color code it yeah so there's a I took a bucket uh, carbon dioxide and I dropped it in here, but it should only push out carbon dioxide to its unit. So, um, and so it goes over into here into this electrolyzer. In the electrolyzer, it will fill up with carbon dioxide. Then it's going to make nothing but, uh, it's going to make uh, oxygen and carbon monoxide. So it's splitting the carbon dioxide into two components and what you're going to be doing is you're going to be harvesting the carbon dioxide part. So what you want to do with your oxygen, unless you're crazy like me because I was realizing what I was doing, outside right there is what we need, the blue stuff is the oxygen. So you got to make sure that you're putting it in the right spot. So go over here and take that We'll go and put that into a fluid trash can. Go pull one up really quick. Come on, where are you? Let's see if it will show up. There it is. Fluid trash can. These are pretty easy to make. It's it's not a a, a crazy object. It's just uh, iron plates, metal barrels, and an iron sheet metal. And then you got this guy. And then you can get rid of some of your your excess junk. So let's go, let's go ahead, and it drops down the top. You might be able to put it inside. I think so, though. But that's how you get rid of that. And to make sure that you're getting rid of the right stuff, this one will totally empty out. Now, I did have the same issue I had over here with getting the chlorine gas out. It's the chlorine fluid, where I had to actually drop it down. So for some weird mechanic, maybe it was facing this direction and it was being weird. But actually, it's facing in the same direction. So, no. But I had to actually come down and then back up. So you have a problem where your gas is mounted. not coming out then try going down first so let's go ahead and get over there get our carbon monoxide we're going to take that and we're going to bring that right over in here and it's going to make as soon as it does it 
fact, let's go ahead and break this real quick so we can see the formic acid build up. All right, so we got methanol, uh, methanol and carbon uh, monoxide, which will make your formic acid. So let's go ahead and let that uh, fill up as it's, it's working. And let's make sure we, we do, no, we don't. Okay, so let's go ahead and add some more carbon dioxide making stuff. So what we're doing, we're just basically uh, producing coal. Sorry, steel. Uh, I tried this with a um, uh, coke oven. Didn't work. Uh, it looks like it's it's designed only for this particular piece of equipment. So it just seems a little odd. I guess I could try again. Maybe put it over a coke oven, right on the center. Maybe that will work. But apparently, it's, I think it's designed specifically for the blast furnace, the improved blast furnace. So, so it's it's running and doing its thing. Be building up more of this eventually. So let's go over here and, and look at how to make this gas over here, this methanol. So. What we have to do is we just simply take water and what we're doing is we're breaking it down to oxygen and hydrogen gas. And as you can see right here, I have my oxygen going into a see right here. Oxygen. There's a pipe there, so it's starting to build up. So I take my oxygen and I just simply do a trash can to get rid of same deal, just a typical pump, powered, it's on switch, so it's, it's pumping. This is just a ground filler here. So we got our typical, another one of these uh, electrolyzers making the gas that we need. So here we go, hydrogen's coming out, and as you can see, it's working perfectly fine over here, but not over there which is weird, but it goes into this mixer. Now the mixer, in order to make uh, hydrogen into methanol, we need pulverized nickel. So pulverized nickel. I use a item filter here to keep certain gases out. Uh, but every so often, you're going to run into a situation where you can see a different color, like hydrogen color, going in there. Just simply break that last that one and just make a, a new pipe, and it will start pulling from the bottom. Because sometimes you'll just have hydrogen gas in here, and, and it will start pumping from the bottom, and you're like, oh, poop. So you just bust your glass. And then, as long as you have a filter in here, it's not going to go into here. If you you don't want to make your uh, fluid router, you can simply just break this and it will clear all the inventory. Once you got meth uh, methanol uh, coming through, then you're good to go. If not, you can always clear the inventory. Breaking. All right. So back to the refiner. The refinery is taking methanol and is converting it with carbon monoxide, which uh, appears to be empty at the moment. Why? It is it's a slow process here of making this. Paint dries here. Being so, there shouldn't be anything else coming from that. That is the color of. There you go. Let's see. So, it's 
to give me some Yep, there. That's a little bit that went through that pipe. Yep. Okay. Got to reach a certain amount of buckets before it'll start. Be five hundred. We'll find a second. Nope. Be a thousand buckets. You too bad. Probably put a mean while. Come on. Come on, Clarice. There we go. That looks like it has to hit 700 before it does. Alright, so that's gold. Alright, so let's go back over here and see the glory of this thing working. We should have enough, I think, now to actually see a process. So, here we go. Show me some. Do not. We need more. Put some more latex in here. Oh, here it goes. See that animation there? Boring in the the items, and you can see the the gas is on the other side, and the uh, latex is on that side, which is weird. So I don't think it really matters which side the. Uh, the fluids go into so but as you can see look at this this beautiful animation here boom takes the bucket drops the bucket just gonna go through this process of filling up these buckets and technically it is slow but it's just it's like a dance we'll just wait for this to go and as you can see uh, buckets I have conveyor belts because all these buckets are gonna empty this conveyor belt and go. You could either have hoppers or conveyor belts. Um, the, on servers you should probably go with conveyor belts because of the fact that you're going to um, hoppers tend to turn off when you even if you have a, a creative core in there, the optimization uh, mods that are placed on the server are going to shut down those hoppers. So yeah, there's one bucket. And it's just going to go down the line. It's going to empty a bucket. So it looks like it's got to dry first. and It's going to dump a bucket. So boom, there goes another bucket. So you can see that beautiful animation going on. And I went and put in the crystal chest so you guys can see the items inside there. There you go. Not too shabby, huh? So it's a very pretty piece of equipment. It's got a beautiful animation. It's very, uh, it's very nice. The only thing that I don't quite like on this is there is no current um, GUI on this. So... You don't know how much is in there and how much it takes unless it starts moving. So that's one of the, the, the drawbacks right now. I'm assuming the GUI just hasn't been made yet or uh, turned on. So yet. let's move on to the part where we have to get latex. So you might have noticed in the SVP, uh, SB, SBV uh, mod pack that I'm 
there is really a shortage of rubber trees and I, in fact I haven't even found one yet so but it's not too bad of a deal you can actually make them so let's go ahead and show you how to make a rubber tree so you're gonna need some illumination powder an emerald and another one and then this pyro ooh py, 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 pyto pyto guru whatever it is and and just any snap sapling it doesn't have to be oak it can be any fruit tree or whatever that you can pull out of hems uh, whatever it just needs to be sapling and you uh, will get a rubber tree sapling now to get this illumination powder you're going to have to use the estrial uh, sorcery mod in order to make it and that's basically coming over here getting your rod and I don't think it works because you have to actually build the chest yeah so you can't just make this in creative mode it seems like it's working you actually need to make it the way it it is built in the game so you need to go to a temple uh, and then you gotta uh, build it there on a on a uh, a craft bench a typical craft bench that you build it there and and it, and it has to have a light beam <laughs> shining on it and you build it there and that's how you make it and that's how it actually triggers so uh, if I built it the right way then all I have to do is right click this with the law and a beam of light will come down and it will make the the item that you put in there but we're not doing that mod and there are several videos on it uh, bit by bit does one uh, and there's a few other ones uh, can't really recall off the top of my head uh, but yes so you're gonna need that power all right so let's go to the next monkey here this is another hard to get and what I mean hard to get is this nitrate or saltpeter so saltpeter is found in the desert all right and I have yet to find it, but you're supposed to be looking in deserts with mountains. So the desert mountaining area, uh, you might see it in the sides of the sidewall of the mountains. Or it might be one of the sea level items. I'm assuming it, it generates the same layer where salt generates. So anything from 50 and above is probably anything with zinc. You could try looking there. Uh, how I got my nitrate disc in in survival mode was I was looking for the saltpeter, and I had a blood moon and just swarmed by a million mobs. And just killed them all, and I was running around collecting all the loot. And apparently, some of the mods, uh, the mobs, will drop nitrate dust, and I had collected two of them. So that's another way to get nitrate dust, is to get it from the mobs, a mob drop. This is charcoal dust. You just simply go and you, you can't just throw this into your immersive engineering crusher. It won't work. You need uh, another crusher. Let me go and show you the one I used. One eternity later. There we go. Oh my god. Sorry. Scared. So, it's one of these monkeys. And I'm assuming you could actually do something like the sawmill over there. But we'll bring up a transmission and make it automated. Let me show you the process here. Throw your item in there go ahead and right click this thing and so your fingernail blue falls off here so what will happen is you'll still an item will drop into here there you go and then do this So 
So now we got two charcoal dust. And so that's how you get a, a few of the different uh, dust that you can't uh, throw into the grinder. All right. So we got this. We got our charcoal dust. We got our slag. Our slag is produced by the blast furnace over here. Beautiful stuff right there. Come on. Slag. So lots of slag. Uh, and then, boom, we can make this phyto goo. You either saltpeter or nitrate. Alright, so the next part is the like, uh, the latex uh, collector and it's it's very simple uh, you got your two treated sticks a space a treated stick a fluid pipe and treated wood slabs will make your latex collector and you simply place it at the base of the tree in which the spout is hitting this graphic icon of I guess the tap point of the rubber tree right. and this is just simply a something out of here it's just a pail a normal bucket you just slide it in there and boom that's what it looks like so as you notice there's no white stuff in here the latex is not coming out it's it appears to be a little buggy because I haven't seen it yet. I planted a whole bunch of these guys. Even moved it on different parts of the tree just to make sure. And seeing one ounce of latex each in, which is not good. Supposedly it's very random. Uh, and you might have to go through a bunch of trees, but once you get a tree that actually produces latex, it will always produce latex. So that's where we're at. Magical latex. It's I don't I haven't tried throwing this on another tree. Because it would be really cool if you could just simply take this guy. Just mount it to any tree general and, and start getting latex from it it, it will fit will it produce latex probably not so but it's something I'll go ahead and throw it in my test world and see if it, it does decide to, to make it but that's one of the sharp faults right now this stuff actually producing latex this is I went to sleep and had my character just floating here and no latex I increased the tick time to 8,000 and nothing nothing happened so uh, latex is a little buggy so if you're gonna go through this you might want to wait to the next update or see if you can at least extract some latex. If you can get latex being uh, produced, then you're golden. That tree will always continue to produce latex. Now there is another way to make latex. I'll just go and show you. And it's a little expensive, but you get your rubber tree. Go ahead and throw it in a uh, an auto tree uh, chopping factory. And you surround the logs, the tree logs, the rubber tree logs, with a latex collector. Now, the only problem with this is the latex, tr this tree right here, may or may not drop a sapling. And that's unfortunate because they're really expensive to make. Ish. Uh, you produce, I think, like 16 of these at a time, 16 of those at a time. So you you have 16 tries to get some saplings so and once you start making some saplings it will hopefully increase the amount 
and you can do it that way. So let me show you really quick. I do that. I'll just go and grab these items here. Go over here to a crafting table, which I think I have one buried here. We'll take our rubber tree. Let's go. Burp. And we'll take one of our collectors. Burp. And it did not work. Why didn't it work? Sworn this is how I did it before. Oh, this way. There we go. There. Sorry, I had it wrong. You have to put a bucket in there. Alright. Now, this is what happens. Boom. Not very good, huh? It, it ate up your latex collector, so it's a little expensive because, like I said, you're gonna. It's gonna cost you a fluid pipe and then some wood. So, there you go, you get your latex bucket, it's the hard way. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, but that's one way to get uh, latex. Alright, so, there you go. So, what does this produce? It produces these right here. Natural rubber. So we got our natural rubber. What do we do with it? Well, that's for the next video that I make, and that will be the vulcanizer. The vulcanizer will go and process this natural rubber into uh, a usable rubber. Let's see. Uh, for belts. So let's go ahead and show you kind of the recipe, just in case you're ahead of the game on me. Let's go piece of rubber right here. Yeah. All done. True. Done. The recipe. There's rubber straps. So go over here to rubber straps. There's your natural rubber sheet. You're going to have to throw it in a press first. Take this natural rubber, throw it through your metal press if, to make it flat, I guess. Make a rubber sheet. <laughs> and then uh, you take that guy and then you put in your vulcanizer. Uh, vulcanizer compound. Looks pretty easy. Uh, silicone dust. Zinc grit. Probably easier to come by. Uh, silicon dust. Is a little bit more interesting to make. May Yes. This is going to be made in the precision guy over here. You'll need the the scheme for silicon ignit. Let me show you here really quick. There you go, silicon wafer. You'll have to make one of these guys. Get your silicon ignit thing, and then now once you got the ignit, then you can go and throw it in your grinder. And you can use the immersive engineering one. This right here is made by just simply taking a raw silicone and manipulating it on a crafting table. And you get that. So those are the next steps. And that would be the cheaper way to go instead of the larger, the other one with the zinc grid. The steel grid or something like that. So there you go. Here we go, the coagulator. Uh, it is a beautiful piece of equipment. It uh, looks like it's got a, a few more tweaks to go. Of course, understand that there's going to be a latex issue. Uh, if you can do finally get a tree to, to produce the latex. I heard it's slow, uh, but, you know, I've, what's this? 20 trees and still haven't produced any latex so that's pretty unfortunate of course to get your carbon dioxide you need to make one of these carbon dioxide filters uh, I don't think we actually covered that so let's go over here and look for it in the box of goodies 
So, not too expensive at all, light engineering blocks and uh, large tanks, fluid pipe, steel scaffolding. This right here, just got to get dye. Red dye. So, it's very easy to make. Uh, so, and in my build, I, I put my, uh, my blast furnace underneath my base, so... I could drop items into it. I think this might be a little problematic. Now, let me uh, check something out here. Because I have my hopper. I use my hopper to drop items in there. And I think I can come in on the side right up here and still put my iron in there. So let's go ahead and check that really quick. Or just the coal. Let's go ahead and put the coal coal my theory. Come on, where are you? There you are. Let's turn that back on. So let's go drop this in there. Alright, no love there. So let's Six go. and a half hours later. It's like work sometimes. So it might be interesting to see if this is going to increase our overall. But, but anyways, there you go. Uh, you can still do your conveyor belts automatic. You just need to be either one below or right up on top of the basket. And there you go. Everything's nice and golden. Great. Well, solve one problem. Problem right here is latex. Let's just double check this bucket over here. Just to make sure some crazy fluke and those actually started working. All right, so there you go. The coagulator. Am I saying it right? Uh, or it's going to be slightly embarrassing. But there you go. Um, and I. Uh, Hope you enjoy. And, um, watch next one I put out, which will probably be the vulcanizer. All right. Well, good luck. Take care.